All right, this is evidence that I actually can and do sometimes catch fish. Little early morning whopper plopper action. There's dad, there's Happy Jack. He's not fishing, so I'm not really sure what's wrong with him. We're on this beautiful pond. And uh, and we're gonna do, we're gonna we're gonna do a lot of brim fishing today with some of those grubs I made with the AI panfish molds. We've already got one fat panfish, but it's early morning. Got a little bit of rain on the water. I'm throwing some top water. Look at this. All right, little little release shot here. Boom, y'all, y'all, y'all. Look at this slab. Guess what it's on? Yep. That's that AI two and a half inch grub in that black and gold. That black and gold. Looks that black and gold is beautiful. Oh yep, yep, yep. The specs are biting right there. So we just had a triple hookup. So I'm gonna run the camera for a second, see if I can get a catch on film for you guys. All right, guys. I'm filming myself. Oh, oh, oh! Got him. It can happen. I can catch fish, and the best part is, oop, on those grubs. It's a good feeling when you catch them on something that you made. Oh, whoa, you can actually see, you can see the glare. Oh, Happy Jack's got the speck. I just, we just put another one in the boat. Oh, dude. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. The way you just boat flipped that gave me anxiety. <laughs> gave me a <laughs> <laughs> sure. that, that literally is yeah there's that grub again yeah awesome man this is I'm, I'm i'm not i'm glad to finally have some like filler footage for the channel all right dad on the spec here oh yeah get go, that right. fish oh there we go yeah Cannot beat this. All right, Dad's on. Let's let's see where that fish comes up. This 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 might be a big one. I mean, they're all freaking 12 inch, 13 inch slabs. What do you have? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's him. Get that fish. Barely hooked too. Oh, Happy Jack is getting happily worked here on the Happy Meal with the same red and black, or sorry, the red and gold. God, I can't talk, black and gold. Dude, <laughs> tighten that drag. Gosh. Hold on, yeah, yeah, Happy Meal special. Okay, this is an absolute, all right, y'all see that over there? That's a big brim bed. Look at this brim. Dude, hold him up. Oh my gosh. Dude, I need to like color match that on a bait. Look at that copper head. Wow. Look at this. And there it is. Those are some thick. Those are so thick. We gotta we we gotta slash the meat. Look at those absolute stud crispies. Yeah. Oh man. Can't wait. All right, everybody. Hope y'all enjoyed that little blog. We went out and wore on the specs. And what made it even better was that it was from the baits that we made in our previous video using the new angling. Well, they're new to me. They're not new molds but the Angling AI Panfish series of molds. Definitely check out that video. It's our most recent video. And uh, you can see a little bit of the color ideas that we came up with in that video. And then at the beginning of this video, you just saw those baits in action. Man, what a trip, never forget it. And uh, I got to share that with my dad, of course, and Happy Jack, and uh, man, did they ever taste good. So today we're gonna do a little bit of a educational slash demonstration type video on a particular type of flake, glitter, that I've had a lot of trouble with in the past, okay? These violet kind of disco glitters, um, they've given me a lot of trouble because of heat sensitivity. And I was talking with Don Rollins at Lureworks a few weeks ago on the phone, 
and um, and I said, hey, do y'all have like a good heat resistant sparkle, you know, violet sparkle type glitters? Um, because there's a certain color that I want to make coming up in the future. And he said, yes, I've got what you need. So I have basically several examples of some of their flakes here and we're going to check them out today. So uh, without further ado, let's look at what we have on the table. Okay, these are actually, it's really hard to get these across on camera. Oops. So even if we do make some really good stuff with them today, hopefully you'll at least be able to see the effect. Yeah, there it is. You can see it a little bit better there. All right, see that, see that effect to it? Yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous stuff, right? And, and I believe that some of these flakes is what Lureworks also sells in the form of glitter film, which you can get some crazy effects with. So, right off the top of our heads, if we look at this um, this violet stuff, right? Ah, uh, see, you can't you can't really see the effect until it's on a dark base. So that right there, right? You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of Gary Yamamoto's Electric Shad which I'm going to try to pull up a picture of. Here it is. Yeah, oops. Right, that right there. See that kind of violet hologram flake in that? That's what this stuff reminds me of. So we're not gonna make that exact color today. I'm actually gonna save that for a future video because I'm getting one of those types of molds. Um, however, I just kind of want to show y'all um, at least how I would use this stuff and and basically you have to be very very temperature uh, temperature I guess aware right you're not going to want to reheat this stuff to to super hot degrees you know you got to put this in pretty much right before you use it uh, so we're just going to go through a few color ideas today we might not get to all of them but the point is to show you how to use these because a lot of times um, when, when people do get kind of these sparkle flakes, you know, I have some from a few other manufacturers, and as soon as I put them in the plastic, it's just, it, it dies. Even if the plastic is down to like 310, it just dies. So let's see what we can do with the Lureworks sparkle flakes today. All right, we're just gonna start real basic here with just some black, right? Just black and sparkle flake, and see what happens for us. And basically, there again, we don't want to add the flake until we absolutely have to. Like right before we're ready to inject the mold. Because it, it, at least with the other manufacturer's sparkle flakes that I've used, you, you kind of don't have a whole lot of time to work with them. So we're going to see if that's a little bit different here today. I'm hoping that it is. Because I would love for this stuff to be a little bit more practical in terms of use. You know, I would love to be able to add my sparkle flakes and then go through the motions, you know, run a whole set of stuff, be able to reheat it. I've just, I've never been able to do that before. All right. So let's see what temperature this plastic is at right now. Let's give it a good stir. Real low. <laughs> 285. Okay. So we probably need to uh, bump it up just a smidge and then we'll meet you back right before we're ready to inject. All right, let's see where we're at. 320. All right, so that is really cold. So, so by, by injection standards, by plastisol standards, 320 degrees is nothing, right? That is super, super, super cold. And, you know, the longer this sits, the more I stir it, the colder it's going to get. So, yeah, you can't even really see it. Here's the medium size, yeah. Here's the medium size sparkle violet, okay? We're just gonna go ahead and dump dump a bunch of it in and just hope that this does okay. I really want a lot of this stuff in there because if it works. Oh yeah, look at how that looks against a black base. It's kind of like color shift powder. It seems to, um, it, it kind of comes out more. All right, so we're gonna stir this stuff in and for the time being, that's actually looking okay. I actually want more, all right? I mean, we're really gonna load it up. And we're just gonna run this solid color in some jerk baits and some action worms and just see how it does. So again, we started with 320. 
Now we're down to 289. It's time to inject. Here we go. We're just gonna see how much we can get here. Probably only get about two of these jerk baits. Or, eh, I don't know, probably just one. I didn't have a full cup there. Okay, that glitter actually held up great. It didn't lose any of its effect. It still has that kind of sparkly, almost color shifting effect to it. And I'm actually excited. Whenever I used to use the even the same exact kind, Violet Sparkle from another manufacturer, even if my plastic was like 300, 310, it would just die. So I'm already feeling better about this stuff, which, which really excites me because I've never been able to use the sparkle flakes a whole lot just because of temperature problems in the past. And one of the good things about using dead on plastics is that it stays really workable at lower temperatures. And that definitely helps you when using uh, materials that are really heat sensitive. Okay, let's see how it did. Join me for a quick drum roll reveal. Let's see how we did. Let's see how the flake did. Oh my God, do y'all see that? Jeez, there's just not another effect like it. Oh my gosh. All right, it's, it's game on now. Why I didn't know about this stuff sooner, I don't know. Thank you, Don Rollins, for hooking me up. This stuff is awesome. And it might just look like purple flake on camera. And I, I really hope you can tell what makes the sparkle, the sparkle flake special. That is truly, truly special. Let's see if we can get a little, little close up here. Yeah. Wow. There's so many cool uses for this, for this sparkle stuff, particularly in the swim bait and jerk bait realm. Oh yeah, look at that. And what, what is exciting me the most is not necessarily this color, but the fact that it didn't die, <laughs> that the flake held up to the temperature of the plastic and still looks just as fresh as it did in the container. All right, moving on to some laminates, we're gonna try sort of a natural kind of disco shad laminate here. So we're just gonna start with some green pumpkin. All right. And this, and this will kind of be similar to that uh, Yamamoto Zeiko color. But we're gonna try to do an exact color match on that one in the future whenever we get a, uh, a mold that's very similar to it. That sort of chatterbait trailer. Really attractive mold from uh, Bass Tackle. Yeah, so we're just gonna kinda do that right there. And darken it up with a drop or two of black. Let's go with one first. Oops. Just to get things a little, little darker. Maybe one more, maybe one more. And then the bottom, we're just gonna go with a white pearl, just a white mica powder. Pretty much any white mica powder will work. You don't have to get it from a, a lure making supplier, but that's just where I have mine from. All right, get that good and stirred in there. Okay, well, we might need a little bit more. Now we're just gonna add a touch of black flake, just some medium black flake to each side, just for some texture. Alrighty. And then we're gonna check our temps, right? Because, you know, we have to be, even though this stuff seems to work quite well, I don't wanna be stupid and mess it up with temperatures. So I believe the green pumpkin side is significantly hotter than the other side, that's just, what it feels like in the cup. I could be completely off. That's 297. Okay, I was way off. This one's hotter. That's actually that's actually a good thing. 
That's really a good thing. Both are still extremely low, okay? So now we're gonna use, we're gonna go back to the violet simply because that's what I think will look best in this color, but now we're gonna use the small size of it, okay? The itty bitty stuff. All right. So we're gonna put a ton of it on that side. Quite a bit. And we're gonna make jerk baits with this. And we'll put some on the bottom side. And let's just see where that gets us. It may not really even show up too good on that pearl. Oh, actually it does, wow. Wowzers. I don't know if y'all can even see that, but that side is gonna look incredible. Oh man. In fact, we need a lot more, we need more. When you have something that looks this good. Y'all know that song Phil Collins in the air tonight? I've been waiting for this moment all my life. Well, I've been waiting for this moment to be able to use these sparkle disco flakes with confidence. All right, here we go. Doing some jerk baits here. Oh man, looks pretty. All right, let's see how these uh, jerk baits came out here. Oh, yes. Look at that. I'm, I'm trying to move it so that you can really see the sparkle effect. If it's still, you might not can see it as well. Look at that, gosh. Let's just get one out. Yeah, let's see. Let's find the best one. There's always like a best one. This one looks pretty good. Look at that. So as you can see, that's sort of the building blocks of that really, really popular electric shad color. Gotta have that violet sparkle flake. Except in the violet shad, I would probably go a little bit more brown on top. And then that bottom is basically clear. So it's still really, really similar stuff. Look at that. Oh man, this is exciting. All right, we're gonna get the other ones out and then we're gonna do a temperature test. We're gonna get out some plastic we're gonna cook it up, we're gonna let it cool down, we're gonna add our sparkle flake. We'll go with something that we haven't seen yet because they're all pretty much made out of the same stuff, I'm assuming. So we're gonna take the sparkle gold from like 310 and then keep bumping it in the microwave to see at what temperature this stuff will give out, which I think will be really, really valuable information. Oh yeah, look at this. That sparkle violet. That sparkle violet's my favorite, if you can't tell. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just too cool. But like I said, this is extremely popular in saltwater colors as well. It kind of transforms what would be more of a bass color, boom, into more of a saltwater looking color. But it's, it's just a good way to add an extra pop. By the way, did anybody see Devin Larratt absolutely stomp? Michael under the table Todd in Dubai. Man, oh man, best arm wrestling match ever. Hate the King's move. All right, so we just have some black grape mixed up because um, this stuff really looks good against a dark base. So here's sparkle, okay. All right, let's throw some in. Oh man, this stuff is gorgeous. Look at that. It's, it's, it's got a huge color shift effect to it. That's the best way I can put it, but it's super, super like reflective. This would be really good for my uh, disco shad color that I like to do, which actually uses hologram flake. This stuff has even more of a vivid effect to it. Okay, let's see, right? That's still looking really, really good. Let's see where the temperature is at right now. This is super low. 295, yeah. So we definitely got it at 295. Now let's bring the camera over and we're just gonna do some bump ups, okay? With the microwave. So, let's grab the cup. And that was at 295, I believe. So from there, this is a 900 watt microwave. Let's do, let's do 20 seconds. Let's see what 20 seconds does to it. 
Okay, the flake is still looking good. Let's see what the temperature is up to now. 326, okay, so that brought it up pretty significantly and the flake is still in good shape. It might be slightly curled, but there again, you know, we haven't actually added this stuff. I mean, what, what, was, what was the temperature that we started with? Around 320, right? So we haven't, we haven't had it in, in plastic quite this hot yet. So we're gonna bump it up another, let's go 15 seconds this time. Okay, it still looks pretty good there. Let's, let's stir it up. Ah, uh, it's definitely, okay, yeah, it's definitely lost a little bit of it. Okay, so now this is at 340, and it's, it's definitely not as good as it was. In fact, it, it just looks a little bit more gold now. Here is a sample of it before it went in. You can see it had a little bit more of that, like, purpley blue and gold effect to it. Now it, now it kind of looks a little bit more gold, so if I drizzle some out on the table. I'll show you the, uh, the difference here. Let me see if I can get a really good angle, right? So if you just look, you'll see that's a little bit more folded up and it, it, it looks more gold. It's lost some of the hues of, of it. So I would say, I would say workable, don't get this over 330. And, and, that, and that goes for whenever you do your remelts, okay? So, so whenever, whenever you're doing remelt, definitely try not to get it. Yeah, you can see it just kind of looks like gold flake now when, when really it should have, it should have a few, a few other colors going on there. That's the same stuff, but yeah, don't go over 330. So there again, you have to be very, very temperature, uh, aware. However, that's much better than my experience before, and that's totally workable. Where, where you're going to get into trouble is, is doing remelts, right? You know, so, so let's say, let's say you, you run a cup at like 310, you do your first rounds of baits, but then you want to, you know, reheat that cup. It's going to be, it's going to be a challenge to not hit that 330. So that would be my advice. Try not to get over 330, really try not to get over 320. And if you can do that, you're going to be absolutely blown away by the effects that you can get with Sparkle Flake. Okay, look at this. It even looks crazier now. So now it no longer kind of looks golden. It looks more orange, right? So this is at 375. And I tell you, even though it doesn't look at all like it should look, it actually still looks pretty awesome, right? That's, that's not bad. However, you know, the, the original effect is gone. So just to contrast that, let me throw in some of this new. That's how it started, right? And then that sort of orangish look uh, is where it's at now. So that's kind of how that, that's how that started, right? And that's how it's going, <laughs> or whatever those new memes are. All right, everybody. Thank y'all so much for being here. Um, we are getting super close, super close to that 70,000 subs which means once we hit that, we will give away the baits that we made about going on about two weeks ago now. So, I mean, we are less than 150 subscribers away, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure. So definitely help us get there and beyond. You know, the goal is 100,000 always. And, um, you know, with y'all's help, we can for sure get there. But um, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you're a bait maker or you want to get into uh, saw plastic lure making, Definitely check out the Sparkle Flakes. Super awesome stuff. I think you will absolutely fall in love with it like I did. And, uh, you know, it's, I'm kicking myself. Well, I punch, punch, should kick myself for not uh, really doing it sooner. I, it's not that I haven't tried. Um, I just, I went to a couple other manufacturers to get that Sparkle Flake. And then, uh, and then Don over at Lureworks said, we've got the stuff that works. The reason why I never even tried their stuff before was because I was like, ah, tried one, tried them all. And I just had some poor experiences, you know, just the, as soon as the flake went in the plastic, it, it was, it was like unplugging a string of lights. Boom. The, the effect was completely gone and I threw it in the trash. So anyway, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, tell your friends, and uh, we will see y'all in the next episode. Hope y'all enjoyed that little spec fishing blog at the beginning. I sure know I enjoyed catching them. Hopefully we can get out again soon. See you in the next video.